This program is brought to you by Emory University. The dog project was hatched almost a year ago, and really the idea is to use brain imaging to figure out what dogs are really thinking. So there's all sorts of theories about my dog loves me, my dog thinks this, but how can we really know because they can't talk to us. So the inspiration for the project was literally on the mission that hunted down Osama bin Laden and it was revealed pretty much a few days after that that there was a dog on the SEAL team um, that did that mission. Turns out, I mean, there's obviously uh, a lot of dogs in the military uh, and they're trained to do all sorts of tasks. The main task being um, scent detection for explosives and, and narcotics and as well as patrol duty. I realized if dogs can be, can be trained to jump out of uh, airplanes and helicopters, we could certainly train them to go into an MRI so we could see what they're thinking. So the task itself is quite complicated because Callie has to walk up some steps to go onto the patient table in the MRI, go in the MRI, shimmy down and stick her head in what we call a head coil and then hold still. Look at that. Look at that. There are several brains there. Now that is, <laughs> That's I'm impressed. Brain. That is awesome. He's going to be so excited. Yay! 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 so proud of you. So when we saw those first images, uh, you know, it was unlike anything else. Um, nobody, as far as I know, had ever captured images of a dog's brain that wasn't sedated. I mean, this was a fully awake, unrestrained dog, and here we had a picture for the first time ever of her brain, and it was incredible. If we can actually capture brain images and see what parts of the brain are activating when we give hand signals, or when we talk to it, or when we point this way or that way, now we can really begin to understand what a dog is thinking. We hope this opens a whole new door into canine cognition, social cognition of other species, and you know, really opening um, and, and really paving the way uh, for understanding interspecies communication. And you know, we think the dogs are the best for this. Um, we have a, a mock-up of a scanner at home in our living room, and so she knows when I say you want to do some training. She goes and hops right up in the simulator and um, waits for her treats. Any dog person wants to know what their dog is thinking. But to the skeptics out there and the cat people, um, I would say, you know, looking at the dog-human relationship is unique. There are no other animals like dogs. Um, they are the first domesticated species. And as such, it really is like anthropology like we're almost looking at fossils because the dog's brain represents something very special about humans and animals, how they came together thousands of years ago, and it's possible even that dogs have affected human evolution, that the people who took dogs into their homes and their villages may have had certain advantages, and there could be traits in those ancestor, ancestors of ours um, such as the ability to communicate with animals, social qualities that make them um, better mates um, and better people. So the reason to care is that, you know, as much as we made dogs, you know, I think dogs probably made some part of us too. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.